Hello, fellow wrestling fans. How are you? Hey, what happened on NXT for February the 20th, 2024? The opening match was for the North American Championship. Fast match. Uma Fema, Alexis King. Bell rang. Alexis King had a run and drop kick to the leg of Uma Fema. Hit, repeatedly had run a big boost to the face, stunning the big guy. Suddenly, Stone, Von Wagner's manager, came out because last week, uh, Alexis King was backstage saying how Von Wagner and Stone suck as a tag team. Stone's no great as a wrestler. He sucks even more as a manager. And same thing to Von Wagner. So Stone started mouthing off to Alexis King. Alexis King pushed him off the ring apron to the floor. Turned around. And Uma Fema powerbombed his ass. I mean, he picked him up and powerbombed him like way up there. Now, I got thought for sure Alexis King was going to go through the ring of that powerful powerbomb. Uma Fema won it quickly. Still a North American champion. Roxanne Perez took on Sinclair next, one-on-one. -on -one. This match was from backstage last week where Roxanne's turning heel. Um, to show more of that this week, like she's getting sick and tired of people walking up to the champion. The Rock's daughter getting free title shots and not having to earn the opportunities. It's not fair for her to have to worry in like a battle royal, no more contendership matches. How come she don't get free title shots? Sinclair told her, why don't you just face the winner between Celci and Valkyrie? And Roxanne told why don't you just shut your mouth money on business and smoke them in the face off a punch. So, that's why this match came about. Bell rang. Roxanne Perez had a different attire on. All, like, heel-looking attire. Dressed right sexy. And before, she doesn't dress right sexy hot-looking. Like, this time she did. And she targeted an arm of Sinclair and destroyed it. Like, stomped on it. Knees down on it. Whip-snapping it down off the ropes. Um, grabbing a hold of it. Smashing it to the ring post. Grab a hold of it and just like pulling the arm like right out of the socket, like just destroying the arm. Sinclair fought back with a good arm with two clotheslines on a row, drop kick, and Roxanne again attacked the arm, snapped it down, um, hit hot pox into STF submission for the win. Next up, um, also came back backstage segment where Jensen Brooks found Josh Briggs last week. He's like, I found my balls. And Briggs like, it's a boat time, it took you a week. Bow rang. Briggs like, come on, give me a best shot right here, man. Come on. Jensen Brooks are loaded one hell of a haymaker. And that floored Briggs. Briggs went down in a heap in the corner, busted his lip wide open. He's like, okay, okay, my turn. And Jensen Brooks like, come on, give me your best shot. Briggs smoked him a forearm shot, knocked Jensen Briggs right to the outside. They started fighting outside. Um, Josh Briggs hit a big boot to the face. I don't know what he was going for, but Jensen counted it, and I just whipped him in the barricade, threw him over the barricade, and between the barricade, the plexiglass, and the audience, he just dumped the holy hell out of Josh Briggs. Got back of the ring, Jensen delivered a jawbreaker, multiple clotheslines, um, drop kick. Josh Briggs hit a sit down choke slam. Jensen kicked out of that. Briggs was like, okay, okay. You actually are doing something. Picked him up. And um, hit out a big boot to the face. And then as Bri um, John and some Brooks came out off the ropes, grabbed hold Briggs, snapped, suplexed him for a two count. Briggs won the match with back-to-back JBL style lariat clotheslines. After the match, he picked up Brooks and said, you know what? Where was that intensity? Where was that physicality when we were a tag team? Keep doing that, he said. You will make it as a single superstar. But if you keep coming after me to prove yourself... You're going to keep losing. Then he shoved him to the mat and walked away. Awesome match. Got to check it out. JC Jade with Jasmine and Fia Hill at ringside took on Grace. This was not a good match, but storyline stuff was happening. Grace uh, I body slammed her down, blew a kiss to the fans, slapped her across the face, waved to the fans. JC Jade twice, Irish whipped her to the outside, distracted the referee, and tried to get Jasmine. And Fia Hill to beat her up. Fia Hill refused twice. Jasmine, she didn't refuse. She beat the shit out of Grace outside the ring. Sent her to the still steps. Stomped on her. Forearm shots. Rolled her in the ring. JC J picked up the win. Fast match. After the match, JC and Jasmine hung it out. And Fia Hill was kind of like conflicted because she didn't want to help JC J cheat to win. I think you're going to see a new toxic attraction form between these three women. 
Or maybe just between Jason Jade and Jasmine, a Fear Hill return will remain good. Um, I'm okay with a new Toxic Attraction. The first stable of Jason Jade, Genji, and Manny Rose was very great. And then they decided to break them out, which was stupid. And now look what's happened to them. Manny Rose out of a job. Jason Jade's with Fia Hill and Jasmine. And Genji's on main event, losing to Jealousy Green. So hopefully this new version of Toxic Attraction is will go somewhere. Next up. Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin came out with the Dusty Rhodes Trophy, the Tag Team Championships. They were bragging it up, you know. Suddenly, the Nathan Fraser, Exeon, and Chase University came out. They won a first shot at the titles. Corbin and Braun Breaker both said, you guys don't deserve opportunities. And Nathan Fraser, Exeon, we fought you guys in the semifinals and they came this close to beating you. And Corbin's like, yeah, but uh, who won the titles of the Dusty Classic? Just saying. Um, Rock's daughter came out. She said, Corbin Braun, you're right. Whoever faces you next for the tag team titles should have to earn the opportunity. So she said, right now, you guys can watch the match on commentary because it's going to be Nathan Fraser and Exeom against Adrian Chase Duke Hudson with Riley Osborne and ringside. The winners will face you. She didn't really specify it would be next week for the tag team championships or at Roadblock. Great tag match. Adrian Chase and Exion started off and they kept out wrestling each other. Like each one applied a hold. The other one quickly reversed into the other hold, vice versa. Both guys did HBK style lip ups and drop kicks at the same time. That was cool. Nathan Frazier and Exion had a double team. Forearm across the back, running super kick, running side kick, and to a running shooting star press. All that sequence onto an Adrian Chase. Duke Hudson got in. Caught Nathan Frazier coming off the ropes with a shoulder tackle. Chase at the same time caught Exion coming off the ropes with a sidewalk slam. Then they um, Irish whipped Nathan Frazier back first into the corner. They kind of like axe of smash. Remember Demolition, folks? Like when they just like deliver blows across the back. They did that to poor Nathan Frazier's back. That guy was screaming in pain. Uh, Duke picked up Exion, tossed him up in the air to deliver a gut buster. At the same time he did that, he fell onto Nathan Frazier like a swanton drop. That was cool. Then he started doing the Dusty Rhodes punch combo. Exion um, sent both Adrian Chase Duke Hudson to the outside with a Huracarana arm drag double team move on them. And I don't know where the hell Nathan Frazier came from. He was like a freaking speed of bullet. And just went right, flying right past Exion and just floored Chase University on the outside with like a moonsault off the ropes. That was awesome. And then a dive through the ropes. Uh, back and forth match. I don't know who was not going to win this match. It was that even he closed. Um, who was going to win it. Exeon did a top rope Spanish fly. On the chase. Um, then Nathan Fraser usually jumps off. Does the Phoenix Splash. But Duke Hudson countered that. By shoulder attacking him down. Then um, climbing and clothesline on Exeon. Then Exeon and Chase. Use, Adrian Chase started doing like sunset flips. Roll-ups back and forth, going back and forth. And then um, Adrian Chase finally sunset flip Exion enough to get a free count. Your winner is Chasing University. After the match, um, somebody attacked these two tag teams and laid them out in the ring. Guess who it was, folks? Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson of the OC. Afterwards, he said, SmackDown wasn't doing enough with us. We'll come back to NXT. Well, after one thing, which is the NXT Tag Team Championships, and they walked away. So, maybe this is like a storyline where AJ Styles maybe told them, go back to NXT, prove yourself up again. Um, Because let's face it, OC has never wrestled a match like for a year and a half now. They even had a tag match. So maybe Triple H finally realized these guys, we ain't going to do nothing with them on SmackDown, we'll send you to NXT again. I'm curious what that's going to mean with AJ Styles, me and him. Is AJ just going to, like, storyline-wise, send the OC just to NXT, tell them, work yourself up again, prove yourself worthy, then I'll join you guys at the stable again, or maybe they're just going to kick AJ to the curb and say, enough is enough, we're going our way, you're going your way. Last Legend with Jackson, the ringside, took on Jordan. Last Grill press slammed her into a backbreaker, jump up, splash, choked her on the ropes. For leg, then applied a comeback. Kind of like it was a unique back submission. Um, then she just let go for some reason. 
Jordan fought back with eight forms in a row. Jump up, kick to the face, stunned last legend. Top rope her Corona, her down. Then um, run, hit, run, drop kick in the corner, knock down legend. Then she went to do the split leg. Like a moon saw Jordan did, but Jackson jumped up with the ring apron to cause a distraction. And now that last legend deliver a top rope choke slam for the one, two, three. Your main event was for the NXT Women's Championship. Oddly Valkyrie against Chelsea Blackheart. Before the match, Oddly Valkyrie told Texty Pexy, if you really do love me, do me a favor, darling. Stay backstage. Do not get involved in my title match. Then we'll do something. I go out or something like that. So Pexy's like, oh, wow, you do love me. I love that story. And I, I think it's going to lead to Pexy um, find out Oddly Valkyrie does not like her that way. And then just go back Mickey James. She's going to turn heel and attack. Ali Valkyrie, and they go after the women's championship there. Or maybe the surprises have them form a tag team. That'd be cool as well. Let me know below. What do you think they're going to do with Ali Valkyrie and Texi Pexi's love storyline? Are they going to become a tag team? Or are they going to be like Trish Stratus and Mickey James and end up feuding against each other? Um, the match started. Both women started doing object takedowns, head scissor takedowns, headlock takedowns. Then Chelsea delivered a face plant buster on the outside. On the ring apron inch. As she did that, she suddenly grabbed her knee. So that's when the knee injury happened early on in the match. Um, she came down fine. She came down both legs perfectly fine. Then she grabbed hold of her knee and fell down. So I think she must have pulled something when she came off the ropes and face planted um, Ali Velka on the ring apron edge. Um, so the Rock's daughter came out. Uh, we came back from commercial and said, Ali Velka, we promised the fans the NXT Women's Championship. Um, first one in the back to come out, but face you for that title was less legend. She did over that backbreaker, the jump up splash, track up ta trash talking, on the Valkyrie. Then on the Valkyrie knocked it down, top rope splash for the one two three. So it was a fast match. Um, Roxanne Perez was shown in the women's locker room. She came out of the shower. She was drying her hair. She's like, "What's going on?" And the other woman's like, "Chelsea got injured." So Rock's daughter came out and said. The first person to come out through the stage gets a free title shot. Roxanne Perez got pissed off that she missed the opportunity, broke the television screen, and left the women's locker room just a scream and hollering. Um, next week on NXT, um, the only match announced came from a segment this week, which was, again, Drew Gulak, Cap, Bones, and Charlie Dempsey um, confounded Noem Dar. And Masu and Metaphor in a locker room. Meta Metaphor's locker room and said, Again, we want a shot, you know, at your Heritage Cup trophy. And finally, I'm was like, Look, you know what? Next week on NXT, you got your shot. Who's it going to be? Is it you, Gulak? Gulak just smiled. Cap's like, You don't get it, do you? We're going to play your game. You're not going to know who you're facing. Until match time. Because matter four, sometimes when they have a singles match, you don't know who that person is until the match starts to fold the other opponent off their guard. So that's kind of cool how Cap, Gulak, Bones, and Dempsey kind of give Noam Dar a taste of his own medicine. I am curious who's going to be facing Noam Dar next week for the Heritage Cup Trophy match. I hope it's Cap or Gulak or Dempsey. I don't want it to be Bones. One of the other three to be okay with. Um, Kamehameha Hayes went to his. Famous barbershop that him and Trick used to go to where they got haircut to hung out. But the people at the barbershop walked away because they don't like Kamel Hayes now. Kamel Hayes says, Trick, if you do decide to come back, the best thing for you to do is behind me. Or beside me. Don't get in front of me. It's so you're not a good singles wrestler. The only good, only reason I have you along all these years is for a tag team that watch my back help me win titles. You got popular. You listen to the fans saying, hey, you know what? Go for a trick. Kamehameha says, I'm a level 10 superstar. You're like a level 3 superstar. Um, then he wanted Dragunov to come out later on in the ring. He said, I'm going to go to the show later on. Ask you to come out. Um, Dragunov instead came up with the big screen. And was Kamehameha was still at the barbershop looking at the TV screen. And Dragunov said, you know what? Next week, we'll have our face-to-face, -face, he said. And I'm going to tell you some stuff you're not going to like about what you did is a trick. He said, I know what you're doing. You won out of shot that championship, a roadblock. He said, next week, 
after this face-to-face, -face, we'll see if you deserve an opportunity at that title show or not. Die Jack has Joe Gacy locked up in a room in a straitjacket with a plexiglass, and he's asking, like, man, what, what makes you tick and all that? It was a lame segment. It was stupid. Um, Gacy, I don't care what they do with that guy. He's not getting over at all. He's not. Um, Luca, the lawyer, showed up and said to Die Jack, like, what you do is illegal. That's called kidnapping it. Die Jack told him, you didn't see nothing. And Luca left. That was, it was an awful segment. It was lame. Terrible. Um, JCJ, Jasmine asked Fia Hill how the Valentine's Day with Roddy Osborne went. Apparently, Roddy Osborne wanted to sleep with Fia Hill and she misread, under, misunderstood what he was trying to get her to do. And she said, well, I don't know what you mean. What happened? She said, well, I don't know. Like, you started making out and I uh, jumped on him and started making out. And then that was it. He kind of seemed upset. And JC is like, I think he wanted to sleep with you. Feels like, oh man, I knew there was something that was going on. Um, the Mafia, um, Tony the Don, Top Stacks, or Azuro, they were talking. Top Stacks said, he's like, I'm going to go to the Rock's Daughter. Get opportunity for us for a rematch for those Titan Championships. And the Don, Tony's like, no, you're not. He said, no. Those Titan Titans right now, they could be on the back, back burner. He said, it's both time. The Mafia boys take over NXT. It's both time I become world champion. It's both time you may become North America champion. Looks like resume, maybe you become winners champion. He said, it's both time we take over NXT Mafia style. And he said, it's going to be starting very soon. So that's interesting. I can't wait to see how Tony the Dawn, Top Stacks, Rizzo, I, I love this Mafia group. Um, stable NXT. I can't wait to see them like, start attacking people, beating them up. Stealing championships, stuff like that. Cool. Um, that's it. The only match announced next week is Noam Dawes defending his Heritage Cup trophy against a member of Gulak's group. Um, I don't know if Corbin and Braun Breaker said defend the Titan Championships against Chase University members Adrian Chase Duke Hudson. Or that's being saved for Roblox on March's pay-per-view. Kamel Hayes dragging off face-to-face. That's the only thing they announced for NXT, folks. There we have it. Um, there was an okay show. A lot of fast matches. Definitely check out um, Last Legend versus Jordan because that was a good match. Definitely check out Bro um, Josh Briggs versus Jensen Brooks. You got to check out the tag match. Um, the other match, and you definitely got to check out Sinclair Roxanne to see how Roxanne Perez turned heel. The other match is you really didn't miss nothing, folks. Get well soon, Chelsea. I like how she's having her hair fully grown back. As let's face it, folks, those dreadlocks spiked up here wasn't working for her. So hopefully, Chelsea is not a major knee injury. They're hoping that she does need surgery. She'll be back soon, very quickly. Um, there you have, it, folks. Stay safe, have bite. To sweet bye.